All right, so let's go ahead and run through some RL series uh, calculations, okay? I have my formula sheet right here. Hopefully you copied them down in the first part. If not, here they are, you can write them down, all right? And so let's look at this circuit. We have, um, we have, two, we have uh, one uh, inductor that is 330 millihenries and a resistor that is 68 ohms, okay? Now the first step in doing this is to be able to calculate out your X of L, okay? And you guys should have the formula for it. It's right here, okay? So let's go ahead and plug these numbers in. So we are using 60 Hertz. Now notice that the 120 volts does not play a factor in here yet. It is not playing a factor, all right? It will when we get our current total, absolutely, but not when it comes to our inductive reactants. So what we have here is, um, scoot this down so my big head isn't in the way when we finally start to run through these, all right? Um, so our X of L is going to be 2 pi F L, all right? So let's go ahead and pull up our calculators and calculate that out. Do this on your own, okay? Pause the video if you need to, all right? That's totally fine. So two times pi times my frequency, which is 60 hertz, times my inductance, which is 0.33, because that's in millihenries over here. So we hit equals, and we are getting an X of L value of 124 okay 124 we'll say 0.4 all right all right very cool so we'll minimize this out here real quick now let's stop and look real fast my inductive reactance is 124.4 compared to my resistor which is 68 what do you think my phase angle is going to do it's going to be much more inductive meaning it's much greater than your um then uh it's much greater than 45 degrees okay and that's a mental quick check we can make so let me show you this really cool chart that i use and i know some of you have seen me use this before my x of l is 124.4 ohms okay all right my resistor value is 68 okay now, using these two values, the next thing I can calculate out is my Z, okay? So let's show, let me show you how to do this. Now, let's assume that uh, each one of these lines maxes out at 200, okay? So that's 100, this is 100. So my 68 would be a give or take right here. My 125 roughly would be right about there, maybe a little bit higher. So my Z is going to be right about there, okay? And let's calculate out what that Z actually is, okay? And so my formula for Z, which I know you guys know, is going to be the square root of X of L squared plus R squared, okay? All right, and this would equal your Z, all right? So let's go ahead and run this through the formula here real quick and see how we do. So I'm going to take 124.4 divided by, or I'm sorry, squared plus 68 squared equals, and then I'm going to take the square root of that. And I'm coming up with 140. 4.7. I hate to round up so too much. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to say this is 141.8. Okay. All right. So I'll scoot this out of the way so you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that in right here uh, at a 141.8. Okay, all right, so try, trying to get comfortable in my chair here. Now, the only other thing that I can do at this point 
is um, without an extra, like, well, there's a couple things I can do. But one of the steps that I want to take is to go ahead and figure out the uh, phase angle here. Okay, so the phase angle, um, I hope you guys can see this okay. The phase angle uh, is going to be equal to, this is, as you guys know from our formula, here's my, here's my uh, formula for that. All right, so I'm going to take my phase angle, which is going to be uh, tangent, the inverse tangent. Sorry, I'm writing too fast here. Okay. With x of l over r. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and type this formula in here. So my x of l is 124.4. Divided by 68 equals, all right, and then I'm going to take the inverse tangent of that, and I'm at 61, all right, so I'm going to say 61.3 degrees, okay, that is my phase angle. Now, question. Is that above 45? Absolutely. That means it's more inductive. That means my X of L must be larger than my R. And as you can see, it is. My X of L is significantly um, higher than my R. And my phase angle now represents that. Okay? Which is awesome. All right? Now, what's the next thing I can calculate out? Well, I could go back to my formula sheet and kind of look at the order that we drew them out in. And it says here, hey, maybe I should get to my IT. And that is exactly right. The next thing we want to do is get to our IT, which is going to equal, all right? Our IT is voltage total, which now I'm finally using that 120 volts, okay, over Z, okay? So we'll... Uh, uh, I have 120 volts divided by my Z, which is 141.8, and I will hit equals here, and my current total is point Z, oops, is 84.84 amps. Okay, all right, so how am I going to use that, all right? How am I going to use that to make this thing operate the way I want it to? Okay, so now, uh, sorry, we now we have our current total. So this is why I really, really like drawing out these 90 degrees here. I really like this feature. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put times... I T okay and now all I have to do is multiply each axis and each piece of information besides my phase angle to get the value okay so I can get my voltage across my inductor this way voltage across my inductor equals uh, oops equals X of L times I T Okay, so I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to take 124.4 multiplied by my IT, which I now know is, let me go ahead and erase that. Well, actually, yeah, I'll just leave that there, I guess. Times 0.84. Okay, all right. So, now, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take 124.4 times 0.84. That's my amperage. And my, my voltage across my inductor should be 104.5. Oh, I ran out of room there a little bit. Okay, but I think you guys get the idea. Okay, volts. 
all right now I want to get the voltage across my resistor okay so now to do that I'm going to take uh, my resistance times my IT so I'm going to take my 68 uh, ohms multiplied by 0.84 again all right so I'm going to do 68 times 0.84 and that is going to equal 57.12 volts okay 57.12 volts all right now can I verify these to make sure I haven't typed something wrong in accidentally used this the wrong uh, formula or calculator I absolutely can I can calculate out what my voltage total is going to be my VT and I already know it it should be 120 right okay but let's verify that and we can verify that with this formula right here okay all right so let's go ahead and go back so um, I'm running out of some space here uh, so I'll clear these out after this but I'm gonna take a hundred and four point five squared plus fifty seven point one two squared equals take the square root of that value and that 119 is that close enough to 120 absolutely it is why is there a difference it's the way we rounded okay anytime you round especially on your IT the effects can multiply over time but to be just one volt off at this point nailed it again is this required no but it's a mental check you can do a check on this to make sure you are on the right pattern okay so we'll just fill this in as 120 the next thing we need to do is get the phase angle all right so the phase angle here um, let me go ahead and clear this some clear some space all right so the phase angle using our voltage is as you can see is right here okay so it's just VL over VR and the inverse tangent of that value so I'll go ahead and write that up here inverse tangent VL over VR okay I really have to invest in a better uh, stylus. This is a free one. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this through my formula. So I'm going to take 104.5 divided by 57.12. So I'm taking this voltage here divided by this voltage here. Okay. Equal that out. Then I will take the inverse tangent and look at that. Boy, you can't get any better than that, can you? 61.3 degrees. All right. Very cool. Very, very cool. So the next thing that we need to start to calculate out is the power. And you guys remember there are all these crazy power formulas. Okay. All right, look at all these, okay, PR and all of these. Remember, they had that I squared times R, and you can do those if you want, okay? I don't want to discourage you from doing that, but I'm going to use a different method for doing it, okay? And so um, let's go ahead and do something here that is going to be a little more uh, straightforward, I think. So... Um, all we have to do is to come over here and take the I total, okay, multiply the I total, which is 0 0.8, which is 0 0.84 
times whatever it is we're looking at here. So I can just take my VL multiplied by my IT to get my PX. I can take my voltage drop across my resistor across this to get my PR, okay? And so this will help us and allow us to do this and to get my APP, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and start running this. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to say my PX value equals um, my, oops, sorry, VX, or V, oops, VL times IT, my PR equals my VR times my IT, and then my apparent power equals voltage total times IT. Now, I think I got this wrong here, okay? I just noticed that when I came back over, this is supposed to be multiplied by. So scratch that. Let me get rid of this, okay? All right, we're going to get rid of this. That's a big mistake on my part, okay? So I apologize, all right? Uh, so if you're tracking with me, this would be VT times IT, okay? My bad. All right, so if those who don't watch the third part won't know that and they'll get it wrong and then I'll feel guilty about that, okay? So, um, PX, so let's go ahead and do that here. So we are going to take 104.5 multiplied by 0.84 equals 84, oops, I don't know where I came up with 84 from. 87.8 VAR. Okay, now let's get our uh, true power, our real power, if you will, 0.84 times 57.12, and that equals 47.12. Point nine eight. Okay. All right. Now, what is my APP? Okay. So to do this, I'm. There's a couple ways. I could use Pythagorean's theorem. Okay. I could use Pythagorean's theorem here, or I can use this one, which is much easier. Okay. It's much easier to do. So. Um, let's go ahead and type that in. So I'm going to use 120 times 0.84. And this is came completely ran out of room. 100.8. Okay. VA. All right. Now, two more to go and we're done. Yes. All right. Best day ever. Okay. Um, what we're going to do here now is let's go ahead and figure out our phase angle, okay? And the formula for my phase angle in this case is going to be right here, all right? And you can't see that, so let me scoot you out of the way, all right? So uh, I will minimize this for a second. We will come over to here and write that down. So my uh, oops, phase angle is tangent negative 1 over px over pr, and I'm going to close that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring my calculator over here. So my px is 87.8 divided by 47.98, and this equals 1.8, and then we take the inverse tangent, and look at that, oh my goodness, how awesome is that, guys? We did a great job, 
Ah, again, no. Point three degrees, that is. Okay, and we can run through these over and over again. And the really great thing here is that, um, as you can see, as my uh, phase angles are all the same, that's a really good mental check to know that I'm on the right track. This is really great. Very, very cool. I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do the oh, sorry, I'm going to do the last formula and I'm going to get the power factor. OK, and uh, my formula for power factor is right next to the red blob. Oops. That you can see. Let me scoot this up. All right. So it's your PR over your APP. OK, so your PR over your APP. OK, so that is going to be this line here. I'm sorry, let me re rephrase that. It's going to be this line divided by this line. And since my phase angle is here, I could also do VR over VT, or I can do R over X of L. Okay? All right? It all comes down to that relationship between X of L and R. That's what all of this is based off of. And I can calculate out my power factor. And in this case, it all has to do with the size of the inductor and the frequency. So in lab, when we change the frequency, everything gets goofy. Everything gets goofy. So let's go ahead and run that formula here. Um, so my power factor, uh, we will take 47.98 divided by my apparent power, which was 100.8. And my power factor is, da, 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 I'll just put it over here, 0.48. Okay, and it can never be higher than one. One would be purely resistive, okay? Zero would be purely inductive. And we're more inductive on this circuit, so we're at, we're going to be less than 50. Okay? And uh, yeah, there it is. That's how this works. This was a, this was a really fun experiment. This was a really good, uh, a really cool little experiment that we did. And um, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to end this here, and then I'm going to make another video uh, showing what happens when the frequency is changed. I'm going to go ahead and now show you what happens when we change the frequency. Okay?